to the Commission of Police joint briefing with the Attorney General of Grenada. Um, in light of our recent announcement that we have had an increase in COVID-19 positive results, there are a number of legal and operational issues we will be addressing today. We are happy to have the AG joining us and we thank all of you for joining us via Zoom. New technology, but it's the emerging technology that's going to take us into the future. As we go forward, let me just set the, the platform as to how we are going to do the Zoom press briefing. There is a chat on the Zoom that members of the media could type in the questions and we will take your questions or you lift your hand, identify yourself and your media house, wait until you are recognized and then we're going to answer your question. So welcome and no further ado, for the time we have already lost, let me introduce uh, the persons who are here or the facilitators of the press brief. The Attorney General is standing by on Zoom, the Commissioner of Police is here and ACP Print in charge of operations is also here in the police conference room. So welcome, good evening, and I hand you over now to our Commissioner of Police, Sir Ed Renati. Thank you very much, Superintendent Connaught, and officially good afternoon, all. Superintendent Cohen, sorry. Connaught in the back room, I was gazing a bit too much. Um, so officially good afternoon, and thank you for participating in this press brief and assisting us with getting relevant information out to members of the public. From the onset, I want to assure the general public that the RGPF will do everything in its capability to ensure the safety and security of our nation and people. This is a responsibility that I will not shy away from, and I am prepared to do whatever it, take, whatever it takes to ensure the safety of our people and nation. In carrying out these functions, members of the force will be firm in enforcing the intentions of the order of the limited state of emergency. Firstly, let me remind all of us that the chief medical officer acting as the quarantine authority established by the Quarantine Act has concluded that all persons who have entered Grenada by air within the last 14 days from other countries may have been exposed to the risk of being infected by the coronavirus COVID-19. And the decision has been taken to place all such persons under observation and surveillance to be isolated from other persons. Be advised that persons for whom this apply, that any failure to comply with such directions given to you is an offense under the Quarantine Act, and which upon conviction carries a maximum penalty of $10,000 and six months imprisonment. It is therefore crucial that such persons ensure that they comply with any instructions given by the relevant health officials as being placed under such observation is effectively a quarantine. And persons must follow such quarantine and self-isolation recommendations to prevent the transmission and spread of COVID-19 to other persons at home and in the community. I will now turn to the Emergency Powers of COVID-19 Regulations 2020 under the Limited State of Emergency. I want to begin by appealing to my fellow Grenadians to start taking this situation seriously if you have not yet done so. We all just learned of additional cases in Grenada. And I am very concerned about the continued laser fair and casual attitude of some individuals in implementing the required action to ensure their own safety and the safety of others. On my way to work this morning, I had to personally address a group of individuals who saw it fit to gather together on the edge of the road having drinks and socializing. I also observe individuals gathering in front of business communities, or business entities rather, 
without any concern for social distancing. I also observed and received reports that some buses have been carrying more persons than the required seat and plan. As a result, I directed our officers to be firm in addressing this matter. Consequently, one person has been arrested for overloading his bus, and this action will be intensified. Receiving reports from the ground just before coming into this press brief, I have learned that as the news of this arrest get around, everybody else now falling in line. It seems as though we always have to be punished in order for us to comply, a very unfortunate reality. But I am also appalled by the fact that individuals voluntarily put themselves in this compromising and potentially dangerous situation by traveling on a bus which violates the stated seat requirement a day by endangering themselves. Additionally, as we speak, a number of our operational units are out in respective parts of the country closing bars that was not in compliance with the regulation. Other actions will be taken where persons may refuse to comply. Ladies and gentlemen, the limited state of emergency contains a number of critical issues instructive to citizens and law enforcement. And I want to speak to a few of those specifically. First, the period of, for state of emergency for citizens implies that citizens must purposefully attend the various business places and places of commerce that are allowed to conduct business activity within the prescribed times and to refrain from unnecessarily gathering. And I want to explain this more thoroughly. If, by example, if, for example, an individual has to leave home to go to the supermarket, the doctor, or the bank, or any other place so authorized for activity, the expectation is that this individual, whether by public transport or otherwise, will go directly to carry out the said activity and find themselves back home. Nothing else is really permitted and we should ensure that we are complying with these measures. The business is not so permitted to carry out business activity. We expect you to comply with the order, as this also will be strictly enforced. Any other business not so exempted as indicated in the order, you can apply to the Commission of Police for consideration. The maintenance of physical distancing in travel at workplace, as well as individuals waiting to access those services must be complied with. We will step up on our monitoring mechanism to ensure that these measures are taken. In this regard, I appeal to citizens to adopt the practice of queuing up, respecting the social distancing protocol as our patrols will be paying attention to those matters going forward. We also appeal to persons not to leave their homes if they do not have to do so necessarily. And understanding that the overarching intention is for us to confine ourselves at home as much as possible in an effort to prevent the spread of this virus. Actions taken to date. At midday today, we completed the full mobilization of the RGPF with all persons who has been on leave. And therefore, you will see a further strengthening of our enforcement measures as going forward. We are also leveraging national resources to provide us with vehicles and other resources to be able to effectively implement our national security strategy. Three, we have initiated an operational command center at the police headquarters to enhance implementation and coordination. We have also had the establishment 
of a subcommittee to review special requests for permission for businesses as well as persons traveling within curfew hours. The government has also given approval to the setup of a national COVID-19 operations room, which will be integrated with NADMA to give effective management to this situation going forward and being able to bring together all stakeholders under a harmonized roof to more seamlessly implement the various aspects um, of this situation. We are also as a force collaborating with the Ministry of Health in doing tracing and quarantine monitoring um, of persons suspected or having had any form of contact or arriving in our country within the last 14 days. Challenges that we face. First and foremost and most critical is individuals not respecting social distancing and wanting to provide services that are not approved. These includes bars and those other places that we will be dealing with. Buses not implementing the seating arrangement recommended for public transport. We are receiving reports that some of those buses are also involved in price gouging, increasing of prices. In this context, I want to encourage members of the public to report these matters to us. We will attend those, investigate those complaints, and we're asking members of the public where this is occurring to please report these matters to the police so we can have them investigated. In conclusion, I want to take the opportunity to thank members of the public who have been providing tremendous information, support, and offer of assistance to the RGPF in this national endeavor. And I want to finally call on all citizens to let us discipline ourselves to support the overarching intention of this order to ensure that we keep Grenada safe and protect it from the spread of the COVID-19. So at the end of the 21 days, we will be able to be in a better place than we are today. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you and look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, um, everyone, Commissioner. I'm pleased that you invited me to join this press briefing with you. I have said quite a bit over the last two days in relation to many of the legal aspects. And, uh, terms of law enforcement. And there's one thing I wish to add. speaking with me today and he has advised that the courts, the magistrate's court have taken a decision uh, consistent with the regulations which were published to remain accessible. Um, you will see that the buildings will be closed but they will remain accessible to deal and process all applications for bail and all other applications for uh, domestic violence included and will be ready on standby in the event that the police force uh, may arrest anyone for breach of these regulations and any other criminal offense for that matter. And they, they, there will be a notice published very shortly in, in relation to how the courts will be accessible. So the, the agencies and the stakeholders are working together to ensure that we have a as consistent and as smooth a process as possible. With that little note, I will uh, with the Commissioner turn to you to say what questions you have in this case. Sherry and Noel, you hand your hand up. Um, you can ask your question, please. Are you hearing me now? Yes, we are hearing you. Okay, um, my first question is the, to the Commission of Police. You mentioned a bit about um, businesses, and so I know that there are some small, well, let's say bars and food, those who sell, well, they have the bar plus the food. Um, what sort of consideration will be given to them based on the present regulations, because they're, they're doing both. That's my first question. Okay. Thank you very much for the question, and, and a very pertinent one at that. The implication in my, in my mind and interpretation is that the order caters for the selling of groceries and food, and we expect that to happen. Um, there are some places that are selling liquor, 
but you sell liquor and take it away. The problem we have with those stores, and, and these are the units that are giving us the greatest challenge, is where they sell liquor, and the liquor is being sold and consumed on the premises, and it is causing gatherings in, as, they try, as they consume that, that liquor. We, this is what we don't want because it, it, it is providing gathering and it's not practicing the social distancing that is required. Um, so as we go around and enforcing these, we recognize that that was an area that, public, that people need to be educated on. Um, and we are getting compliance and we're hoping that by the end of the day and into tomorrow, this will no longer be a, a, a matter of concern. Okay, part two to my question, it has to do with what you mentioned about quarantine and the setting up of your task force. Um, now that the, the country will be closed off at an earlier time, uh, will we see improved patrol and in terms of the safety of businesses? Because we do know that there are some among us who try to utilize every given opportunity to do the wrong. Excellent. Um, all of those considerations have been taken into consideration with our operations plan. And <clears throat> definitely, we have augmented all of our divisions and departments with additional vehicles, and we have established a number of teams for different functions. So you will find intensified policing across the entire trial and state. Now that we have completed our mobilization of our human resource, you will find into tonight curfew that a number of checkpoints will be established across the country and thereby limiting the movement of criminal element. The strategy includes that within all of those checkpoints there will be mobile patrols going within the communities and bouncing in against those checkpoints that will be set up. So the first function will be all movement the checkpoints will regulate that, and then there will be mobile patrols between the checkpoints that will ensure community safety. In addition to this, there will be a quick reaction force located at all divisional headquarters to respond to any incident that may take place on the ground requiring a police response. Thank you. that we're going to now answer. The first question said, 
there are rumors about break-ins and whether or not we can clarify. So we will like to clarify whether or not there are any truth or it remain rumors which we need regards to increase in break-ins. Mr. Prince? Okay, yeah. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, just to say that, um, again, we do not have any information that confirm to this uh, uh, information about breaking. Um, there is nothing abnormal to some of the criminal activities that we've seen happening, um, and nothing that we can associate with uh, the state of emergency that currently exists. And there is a second I just want to say, in addition to the answer that Mr. Prince has provided, Every morning, I receive uh, a briefing on the status of crime nationally. And this morning, there were three crimes. One was a breaking. Three crimes, one was a breaking. So I will encourage if members of the public have information of any other crimes that they need to be reported to us. If those crimes are committed, as seem to indicate, uh, maybe their crimes not reported to us. Um, but from the briefing I would have had from CID this morning, but I want to believe it's true, was only three crimes. All right? Um, as it relates to the second question on the issue of where the person was arrested, I think it's gone. Where the person was arrested, um, two things for clarification. was not an arrest for social distancing, but was an arrest for a person overloading the bus um, this morning, and it was done in the St. George's area. Well, I, the, the next question um, says, how would the police need with, deal with by roads? Um, I don't know the context of that question, but as far as I'm concerned, all roads in Grenada will be treated as normal roads when they are public roads. But I do not know how do you treat with by roads in what context you are asking that question. So it's difficult to give any further clarity if you have something in mind. Christina John, you are recognized. You may ask your question, please. A lot of persons, you may say, well, I'm just coming to brief with it. But what were some of the challenges experienced as the first evening? And my next um, question in relation to that, it seems that we have limited, say, transportation now. Some people will be left stranded, and they will run beyond the curfew hours. How do you deal with that with persons now that will have... No, she's there. She wanted to answer. She asked, oh, what okay. was the first evening? Challenges for the first evening mm -hmm. yesterday. Um, there, were no, there were no major challenges for the first evening. As a matter of fact, I was relatively impressed with the level of cooperation we've had from the public in general um, on the first evening. The fact that we have implemented with minimum resources. We have not, by the end of yesterday evening, we were not up to full strength by mobilizing our entire staff. And so the security rollout was partial. But I think the support and response from the community in adhering to the, the issue of curfew and timings was impressive. Um, tonight, that would certainly improve to a very significant level. And that will be witnessed by one and all. Okay. All right. Mr. Hutchinson, um, hold on. The, the one question I need to answer that I think um, Linda Straker was trying to get in, which says uh, how we treat with cells and social distancing. Um, that is a matter under consideration, and, and so there is actually a plan for dealing with that. Um, persons where they are arrested for minor offenses, depending on the circumstances of those, we will look at providing only bailing for those issues. Um, we also will be looking where we have to keep people in custody to leverage the, inside, the entire cell capacity across the force where we might be able to distribute peoples. We are anticipating that person may be arrested more in one jurisdiction than the other. So we will be able to use the cell capacity across the force if we have to move individuals, should in case for any critical issue, we have to keep people in custody. This must also be considered against the backdrop of what Mr. Ramdani AEG has just explained. The fact that the court is open, if we have more serious offenses that requires um, no bail recommendation and the court so approves, then of course those persons will then be remanded to prison. 
Um, but in terms of cleanliness and maintenance of cell, all police facilities um, follows a very strict protocol, particularly cells in terms of cleaning and maintaining the sanity of those areas once we bring persons into those areas. Mr. Hutchinson, Mr. Mikey Hutchinson, you've been recognized. Do you have a question, sir? Okay, yes, um, to, to all. Um, my question was along the same lines of the, the one that Linda Stricker just asked. Now, I want to know what measures are in place for the frontline officers, the officers who are going to be dealing with, with persons on the street in the event that they may need to make an arrest and given the assumption that the person who they may be arresting may just be someone infected with the coronavirus. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, one of our proactive measures in preparing the force for treating with this particular situation, very, very early, um, we called in the medical persons to have a briefing with our senior commanders to have an understanding of what is COVID-19 um, disease, how it is infected, what are some of the precautions we can take in that regard. Um, and that was long before we had even had a case. Um, so commanders started taking proprietary measures since back then. Of course, fast forward, we are now at a stage where we have developed policy and guidelines for treating internally with keeping the stations and officers healthy, as well as keeping our facilities in the best possible condition, the fact that police officers live there. So we develop protocols and guidelines to preserve our workspace and also practices for officers to follow. In addition to that, we issued cleaning equipment to officers to maintain the facility and themselves. We issued in part PPEs to the personal protective equipment or suits that if there are any case where an officer need to respond to, they would have a limited supply there and where that is larger than necessary, of course we will then depend on medical for a joint response. We have also gone to the stage of develop guidelines for officers should in case we even have to transport a person who might be a suspected case, the first step will be to deal with the medical, to call in medical to assist, but where the circumstances is life and death and we warrant that we do have to move that person. We can probably put that person in a PPE or outfit and transport them in addition to sanitizing that vehicle before and after as the case may be with following other guidelines of distance in, in the process of doing so. So officers have some equipment. We continue to get, only yesterday we had an additional 80 suits that can be used and distributed across the departments should in case we have to suit up to respond, we will be prepared. As indicated in the actual presentation of the brief, we do have a collaboration with the Ministry of Health um, and we are working on a joint task force that involves police officers, immigration and health in the tracking and treating those cases. If we have to respond to any matter where we have a suspect, we do have a mechanism to coordinate and request joint response with health to assist in that particular case. I hope that answers the question. It does, thank you. Uh, Ms. John, you still have your hand up. We've recognized you before. Yes, you may continue your question, ma'am. Christina John? She's muted. Yes, I say, I have a response to the second question that I have asked you. Really. How do we treat with that? Could you repeat the question, please? We have lost you for a few seconds. Okay, I'm asking, how do you treat the people who are working and they cannot get transportation to go because of the limited, I would say, buses um, say available? How do you treat the people who are found at the late hours on the road? How do yes. you treat with that? We get you, Thank you. Thank you very much as well. Um, that was one of the approaches that we had yesterday. The, the, Everyone in any movement must have a reason to move. And yesterday when we started this, remember curfew starts at seven. And so we understand critically that if a business is to close at five, all supermarkets is to close at five with limited buses on the road, as well as buses having to maintain a particular seating protocol, that it could be a bit challenging to get everybody off the street 
by 7 p.m. Um, and our officers have been briefed to make sure that they do a proper evaluation of those circumstances and exercise discretion um, in enforcing that. But certainly, there is a timeline in which that will stop. And we believe at the moment, a realistic time is about 9 p.m. So we have a more flexible enforcement situationally where the persons can properly account and we will have a light enforcement to allow persons a chance to be able to get home. But that approach in dealing with curfew will significantly increase from around 9 p.m. Cherian, you recognized? Up on me, Cherian. You hear me now? Yes, we are. Okay, so I just want to go back to the question that Mikey asked in terms of social distancing. In the COPA's brief, he mentioned about increased um, vehicles and so on. I would like to know, in terms of assigning manpower, how would you do the social distancing in terms of the, the number of officers, in terms of vehicles to go on on dispatch and so on? How do you plan to do that? Okay. Well, that's an internal strategic question, Sherry, and thank you for thinking strategically. Um, but certainly, we, we do, as a matter of fact, not just vehicles. Even within our own workspace here, we, we exercise distancing as a protocol. The last officers' meeting we have had, we didn't call in our commanders. We um, did it by Zoom, so persons can stay out to maintain that distancing. So the issue of distancing, we, we try to comply with that as much as is possible, but certainly also in the workplace. And as it relates to vehicles, there will be a number of persons assigned to vehicle as is appropriate to afford for distancing. So if it be a driver and two, or a driver and one, then so be the case. We are trying to get um, twin cab pickups. We have made arrangements to get more pickups, so there are more distance that can be utilized, so you can actually have more persons in one vehicle, rather than having to use a number of vehicles to execute the same function, given the fact that you are dealing with scarcity of resources. The good thing is with this, with this situation is that the majority of patrols that we need to do on the ground at this point is different to a disaster environment in terms of an Ivan context with looting and heavy security situation. This is more, uh, it's a more civil approach where persons are, re are readily willing to comply. So at the moment, a smaller number of officers tends to achieve the objective that is intended. If, however, the behaviors and cooperation changes, then of course, that mechanism, in terms of the requirement of officers per vehicle or numbers of vehicles, are likely to change. Any other questions from anyone else? Those of you whose video is not up, you can type your questions in on the chat and we will be happy to respond to it. I have a question. I hope that it doesn't go ahead, Mr. Hutchinson. I hope it doesn't go too deeply into your strategy. Um, but we have seen videos online where the police um, use force, flogging, batterings, and so on to disperse gatherings. Um, what sort of plan do we have in the event that we have gatherings that are not really compliant? Are we? going to be arresting or attempting to arrest these, or are we going to use the same uh, methods to disperse these gatherings? Okay. All right, thank you very much for that, Mikey. Um, <clears throat> let me say clearly here that the police have an authority to use force, but that authority is not absolute. That authority is guided in law and should be used with great restraint and discretion whenever force has to be used. And if force is used out of line, as the RGPF has consistently done, persons so aggrie aggrieved, or even if we observe it without a report, we will investigate those matters. So if persons figure at any point in time that they are treated in a manner inconsistent with the protocol expectations of the RGPF or the laws of Grenada, they can make that report and we will investigate. And if, as a matter of fact, out of videos and social media, we've noticed what we think is inconsistent practice, we will also investigate that. The other side of the question, how we will look at this boss in crowds. Fortunately, the force is equipped with a number of equipment that can assist us 
with dispersing crowds other than having to have physical contact with individuals. Um, and of course, you can put your, your, your mind at, um, in, in what those circumstances will be. Um, but the approach in going to that level of force will be by various levels. We first would announce, declare, speak to people. And if you, if you get plain belligerence, um, then of course the level of force necessary will be escalated to do what is absolutely necessary. But one thing I can assure you is that in this environment, where the risk of the safety of this country is at hand, one thing you will not get is that the RGPF are not responding and treating with that situation. It's a responsibility that we harness, that we take, and we know we have to fulfill at this time. The mandate is before us, and the rank and file of the force appreciate it, and will do what is necessary to make sure that we protect the safety and security of our trial and state and our people. You can follow up, Mr. Hutchinson. Okay, thank you very much. Now, Ignorance of the law is no excuse, but we have to also appreciate that the rules and regulations that we are uh, guided by now may be new to some people. What measures does the, the Royal Grenada ha Police Force have in place to inform the general public of what the general public of what? Um, scarf and so on, and probably may not have been aware that this is a, a, a possible breach. So, how do you plan on guiding us on the do's and the don'ts? Um, <clears throat> certainly, this is one of the mechanisms by which we seek to inform people, and, and having regular press conferences and briefings is one of the mediums we will, do, we will use to do that. Um, we have had a number, I think the Attorney General himself has been on a number of programs trying to educate people on this new approach that people are not accustomed to, and we will continue to do that. Um, we need to understand as well that the laws that we are implementing in many respects are not new only to members of the public, but are also new to some officers. And you may find in the application um, some interpretations of some aspects of it that we need to relook with officers and have that um, addressed and rectified. And that we will do from time to time. We do a number of briefings internally to educate commanders and officers on what the application of the law should be and how they should deliver. And of course, our protocol is once you are out there and challenged with something, if you need to ask for a direction, you can do that. So you can also call back to ask for advice on how to treat with a particular situation. Yes, Ms. John, we have recognized you. Okay, my next question, it pertains to, like, there appears to be some form of misunderstanding um, of the statutory, uh, what was passed yesterday, statutory rules. Um, as it Where some vendors were expressing um, displeasure, dissatisfaction, being asked by the police to pack up and go home. Can you um, really explain or clarify so that they would get a better understanding whether or not they really should be um, doing business? All right, the issue with, with, with vendors is an evolving one, and I have monitored um, a couple of briefings this morning. There actually was one involving Mr. Ramdani himself, um, where that matter came up as well. Um, and certainly, we have to understand this in my mind in the context of what is trying, what we are trying to achieve as it relates to the limited state of emergency and the issue of social distancing and whether or not particular businesses are likely to affect what is intended here and whether or not we are probably creating a soft spot or a gap um, that might be a vulnerability in the whole apparatus. Um, yeah, I think it has been taken on board that the issue in how we treat with vendors in whether or not they can or cannot in some way be facilitated in order to be able to apply the trade while not affecting, while not affecting the general intention of this initiative has to be looked at. Um, but in the meantime and until such time, we need to maintain what is there until we have greater clarity on how to treat with those issues. Can you speak to Masquerade? 
the CPP was in South Dakota. So in one instance, in that Okay, right. Instance. Okay. All right. I think the issue of the masquerading happens to be a, a follow-up question from what Mikey might have been alluding to. Um, that's a situation that went viral, as you well know. Um, and we have actually engaged the officer involved in this matter and tried to get reports of exactly um, what occurred. We, in the application of any kind of law or in any particular situation, in my mind as commissioner, I think persons have to have a measure of discretion, persons have to have a greater understanding of how public may feel and respond to particular situations. And in policing that, we must understand the remit of those issues. So to speak more clearly to this, because I think what I've said, you may say that does not answer the question. To speak more clearly to this, individuals would have a mask in their face in terms of what we consider as one of the protective masks. Um, to protect coughing and sneezing and so forth. In the current environment, in all honesty, if I see a person with something tied across their face um, who might be sneezing or coughing in that purpose um, and doing that to protect themselves and protect the spread of a particular virus in the environment, I think the police need to exercise a particular measure of discretion in that context. Um, so certainly, again, um, going back to Mikey's question, this is one of the areas where we see we need to drill down more in our officers to have a greater understanding of how they actually apply the interpretations of those issues, given the current situation that we find ourselves in. Any questions from anyone else? If not, I want to invite the Attorney General, if he wishes to make any closing remarks or any advice if you wish to give to the public. Mr. Ramdani, the floor is here, sir. operations in the RGPF to make a few remarks. Okay, uh, my f I just want to make two points um, that Commissioner would have spoken of briefly, but I just want to emphasize on them. Um, and one is to do with the security of business places and uh, private companies. And to, uh, and to advise that um, while the RGPF has the responsibility for uh, overall security, secu security for the entire state of Grenada, we are asking private companies and, and other stakeholders to exercise your own security and implement your own security plans as well. We believe that quite a number of our private security companies are available and are uh, on contract with uh, some corporate uh, citizens. Again, uh, those will be well needed around this time. So please engage and do your own to help in providing security for yourself. Uh, just allowing us to 
um, do a wider coverage for the entire nation. The second point I want to make is that of the PASS system. We've seen a number of applications coming for PASS, Access PASS. Um, I want to advise the general public also that the PASS is only necessary when the COFU is in place. Okay, so you do not need a PASS between the hours of 5 in the morning to 7 in the evening. Right? A pass will only be needed from 7 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Um, and if you are not going to do, be involved in any business during that period of time, then there is no need for you to apply for a pass. So please, um, it's quite a lot of applications that are coming in. There is no need, if you know that you're not going to be operating within that time, there is no need to apply for a pass, as, as the case might be with a lot of you who are applying. So please be guided accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. ECP Prince, and to close it off, I would now again invite the Commissioner who will bring the curtains down on this press room. Uh, thank you very much, Superintendent Cohen. I just want to conclude by starting on the very point that Mr. Prince um, just indicated, and to call on us as a nation for us to isolate and quarantine ourselves and move only when it is absolutely necessary. Um, while pass may not be needed during the periods of 5 a.m. Um, to 6 p.m., then of course, what you need to do though, while you don't need a pass, you need to be able to justify that you are going to do something purposeful. And it's not just the floodgates open for everybody to drive around within that time. The intention here is for us as a nation to quarantine ourselves, to make sure that we stem the transmission of this disease. Very critical that we do this. The limited state of emergency to con for the continued viability of our nation has afforded some entities to continue to operate so that we can continue to, be, to thrive as a nation and for our needs to be met no matter what. But this is not an excuse for us to abuse the opportunity that is afforded to us. And so I want us to take that very critical and to understand the government and the police and the media cannot do this by ourselves if the citizens do not accept the fundamental responsibility to do what is required and lock ourselves down for 21 days so that Grenada comes out good we can have a problem we are a small nation and we cannot afford for this thing to take root amongst a hundred thousand people we are less than a village in the developed countries. Six cases are six cases too much. Let us stop the complacency people, wise up to what needs to be done, and make sure we play our part in stemming this and so that we do not have one other case detected in Grenada. At the end of the 21 days, we can boast that as a people, we have pulled together to make sure the safety and continued viability of Grenada as a nation. On that and with that, I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner. And as one of the efforts the IRGPF has engaged to mitigate against the spread of the COVID-19 virus, we do want to say to the public that going forward, all correspondent to the police force should be sent via email, all correspondent to the police force, should be sent via email. I am going to provide two email addresses that you can use to facilitate the transmission of your communication. The first one is rgpf at spiceisle.com, rgpf at spiceisle.com, and the other one is cops at rgpf.gg, cops at rgpf.gg. And you will appreciate the fact that this is necessary at this point as we play our part in not only our security apparatus on the ground, but in communicating and communication our way of mitigating against contracting and spreading of the virus. I want to thank you for joining us live. I have been your host, Superintendent Vanny Cowin. Good evening and thank you. <laughs>